G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today we're going to be having a look at a new platform and that is Autodesk Tandem. So Autodesk Tandem, if you haven't heard of it before, um, is a project that essentially is Autodesk's digital twin attempt. Uh, now I say attempt lightly because th this video is sort of going to act a little bit like a review, uh, but also a demonstration, uh, just to see if this is actually a, a viable solution uh, for digital twin. And of course, I'm mostly going to be looking from the perspective of a client, not as an architect, because we're not the target market for this platform. The, the target market should be the clients, right? Because these are the people operating the facilities. So you know, when I first downloaded Tandem or well, access Tandem, I was really hoping it wasn't going to be too Revit centric. Um, it wasn't going to use too much Revit terminology um, and it wasn't going to be confusing for a client to use. Um, I've got to say it's probably, you know, all three of those things, unfortunately, but, um, but there are some good things in there as well. So I'm going to just jump straight in. We're going to have a look at it and then um, I'll give my sort of two cents at the end. Anyway, let's jump in. Okay, um, so I guess what you're looking at here is the homepage to Autodesk Tandem. Um, so at the moment, um, I'm just going to look at probably the sample facility very briefly and then just go into my own testing project, which is, you know, far more complex and better reflective of a real BIM model. Um, you know, we're in this good old, um, you know, ugly school. <laughs> I hate to call it that, but it is a bit. Um, so at the moment, you'll see it, it, it is pretty much like a Forge Viewer. If you've ever used one before, I'll hazard a guess that it is a Forge Viewer in principle. Um, so, you know, you can never navigate around with the standard controls. It's fairly easy. Everything's nice and clean. There's anti-aliasing. So it's good for like a, I guess, a non-user of BIM platforms. Um, it's very navigable, very easy. You click on an element, you can see it. Um, now, I, I must say, I must be missing a few things here. It'd be nice if there was like a little quick properties tab, like in like Navisworks or a program like that, so that as soon as you select something, you get instant feedback. Um, from what I can tell, you have to go to this properties tab to really inspect properties of elements. Now, immediately you're gonna see something that's quite challenging in tandem in that it's very much set up to deal with Revit. So most of the lingo or the property names is very much based on Revit. So things like elements and type. Now, if I was a facilities manager, I'd have no idea what that means. You'd need like a training session just to get your head around terminology. Um, so immediately that sort of is a bit of a red flag for me. Um, you know, it would have been good to see them maybe humanize some of the language in here a little bit. Um, having said that, you can go to type properties and you can pretty much see as good as all the properties in the model um, exposed, which of course in the sample mo model means you see very little, um, which is why I'm not gonna be in here for very long. Um, but in this case, you can also filter by level. Um, so at the moment I have a setting turned on that lets you ghost out the model. I doubt that doesn't let you get ghost out the model. Having said that, you can change um, change how things ghost out, but I find this very difficult to view because everything sort of washes out and you can't really see behind it. So I usually just turn off elements that aren't currently being filtered. And that sort of lets you have a look at what's going on. Um, you can obviously turn things on and off. Um, in this case, it would be good to have like inclusive and exclusive filtering. So you can turn like one category off, for example. Um, but in this case, I can pretty much see inside my building can start interrogating some elements. I can also isolate elements or do section boxes. So I can shift select to hold multiple elements, right click and create a section box or plan. And then from there, I've got my section box. So it's not too bad um, in that regard. You can sort of just like zoom around your building and have a look at things. So I think like it's sort of navigable for like a non-user of BIM platforms, but really that data naming is definitely gonna be a bit of a jarring phenomenon. Um, for someone that hasn't used um, hasn't used this type of software before. Um, so yeah, I think that that's probably gonna be a challenge. You can see that as you get on different sides of the section box, it sort of gives you this, this grippy pull. It'd be nice if you had maybe a couple more so you've got full control of this element um, because to get on top and pull this down, I don't, I don't quite know. I guess you have to select the face, that seems to work. So that's probably how I'd usually be going around to find a particular room. Having said that, if I want to reverse engineer and just look for something based on its properties, I'm not sure how easy that is. Let's say I'm looking for a particular room in my model. I'd probably need to generate a report to do that or an inventory of rooms if that's possible. Um, but before I even look at that stuff, I'm going to switch over to a proper um, model. In this case, I'm going to use a test project um, that I'm currently developing for my course platform. And as you can see, this is a this is a definitely a bit more of a beast uh, than the Auditor Sample project. It is essentially based on it, but it's like a real a real model per se. Now already there's a few things that aren't quite loading properly, so I assume there are some you know graphical hits that it's taking here. Like I know for example some of these things are the wrong colors. 
um, so that it's obviously not fully loading everything in the model as far as I can tell. Um, there are some things that's getting wrong. Anyway, um, but for the most part it's doing pretty good. So um, let's just have a look at the filtering again. So I've got um, separate models linked into this same session. Uh, but as long as they're, they're named correctly, it seems like it does understand how to associate those between floors. So in this case, you can see that the floor, the floor filtering is pretty good. Um, you know, it's pretty much detecting everything with a particular name of level. So of course, your, your levels will need to be named consistently. That's already going to be a challenge that we're relying on the raw rabbit data to be true and correct before it even hits the platform. Um, so clients are going to need to know what to brief people for. Um, before they even get this model. So that's going to be another challenge. As we know, um, most projects do fail uh, because data briefing doesn't happen or doesn't happen effectively. And as a result, the client gets a model they can't use. Um, Tandem is going to be like the perfect example of that if it's not done properly. So it is something you need to consider. Um, having said that, I am quite impressed that some things do know what level they belong to, like things like curtain panels know that their host wall is in level one. So there is some um, sort of sub filtering happening, I think, that's sort of helping all these elements actually be sorted by level properly. So I'm pretty pretty happy with that for the most part. There are a lot of elements that sort of, you know, fall under the unassigned classification, like model groups. Uh, some work plane based elements don't know which levels they belong to. So there is um occasionally some elements that I do question, like what, what sort of properties are being received. Um, at the same time, we can look at um you know the substructure. You can cluster things technically, so if I just want to look at like the substructure of my building, oh, it's going to do this forge thing, isn't it? It's going to go and cluster everything. Don't really want to do that. Oh, it's doing this, yeah, this, it's doing this thing where it just keeps sort of like breaking the model. There we go. Like it looks cool, but I mean, what's the point? <laughs> Crazy. So you can see here I can isolate various things if I've, if I've classified them properly. Um, and for the most part, I haven't really used systems, so you're not really going to see that much classification in this model. There's not a great deal of um, like fire equipment. For example, I haven't got a services model in here, so you're not going to see the full merit of that system. But if you have set up your like your hot water, cold water, etc., that's where you'd see those properties and be able to isolate or focus on those systems. And from there, you're really just looking at types. So if I focus down on, say, my casework, for example, um, there's all my casework. So you can see it's a pretty quick, pretty responsive platform. Having said that, I'm not sure if like a client's really gonna gonna follow the logic of using Revit category names. And, and again, it's a little bit disappointing that the program is pretty constrained by Revit's limitations or Revit's way of working. Um, one thing I'm missing here is rooms. I can't see rooms <laughs> under categories. Now, I don't know if there's a, a property I have to enable to make sure the rooms come into the model, um, but this is a pretty key element in, you know, in managing twins that doesn't seem to be present. Um, you know, I, I might be missing something, but like rooms are like probably the most important thing <laughs> in, in a model like this, right? So I am a little bit concerned if rooms aren't available. Um, I'm just hoping that I've missed something obvious where they're all contained because they're pretty critical. So if rooms aren't actually in here, um, you know, big, big red flag. Anyway, let's have a look at properties. So you can inspect properties of elements um, and you know you can look at various things. In this case, I can see my assembly code, which is in this case, my classification system from the UniClass 2015 system. We're gonna talk about classifications pretty soon. Um, but you can see all my shared parameters made it in, which is okay. I mean, obviously they're not really gonna, gonna line up with other platforms. Now I can't actually modify the platform, the, the properties from the Revit model, which is interesting because when you take on a facilities management model, um, typically you're not gonna be going back to Revit to make changes to the facility. You're gonna to wanna to do it in a platform like this. So I am a little bit confused as to whether the intent of the platform is to allow people to post edit these elements or whether they're gonna to have to rely on manually introduced property sets only, um, which makes me think it's gonna be a bit of a challenge for a facility manager, especially if they don't use Revit, which you know, pretty much none of them do. <laughs> So we can go to the assets and we can have a look at classification systems now. Um, so in this case, if I just uh, maybe just delete my classification system and go to add a new one. So it's interesting that you sort of apply a, class a classification system in post um, inside the system. Now in this case, I'm just going to create, I'm just going to create a new one. Uh, well, I'll just try creating another one, test one. 
I think in this case I have to go and under manage to find my classification systems. Now, at the moment there's only two classification systems supported, so that's a bit of a thumbs down for me. Uh, master format and uni format, again, a big thumbs down, you know, where's uni class, right? <laughs> that's probably the obvious one. Um, and in this case, it is pretty much the same old management systems we've seen that come with Revit. Um, so you've got your, your, your master format, and we're, we're going to throw that straight out because I, I never use master format. Um, uni format, it's okay, it's very high level, um, but you pretty much have the full hierarchy available. Um, you can add the classification and give it a name. Um, you know, here's my thing. Now you can add, in this case, an XLX, uh, XLSX file. So this is probably where you could introduce things like UniClass, but I think it's better just to see them build it in to the platform, given that most of the time you're going to have clients managing these platforms and most of them won't know how to configure this sort of thing. They're probably going to get the schema wrong, they're probably going to make a mistake. So I do recommend in future they look at adding more standard classifications, um, in particular UniClass 2015. Um, you've got parameter sets as well, so in this case you can introduce um, new sets of parameters, which in this case I guess are, are things that users can populate, and you associate these to the classification sets. So depending how elements are classified, you essentially can tell these elements to own additional sets of parameters. And these would be the things that the facilities managers, managers would be managing or configuring, um, whereas all the Revit data, as far as I can tell, is static. So what I, from what I can see, these properties come from the model, whereas these ones are part of the tandem platform, and they're just based purely on belonging to elements as long as they meet a certain classification. So you are locked in to some degree on, I think, the way that elements have been classified in terms of what additional data you can give them. Um, so there is a bit of intent you have to put forward in terms of how your model's classified before you get it into tandem, from what I can tell. Um, so I think in this case, like, it, it's definitely probably, like, the only way they could do it. Um, a, a huge omission that's missing here, like, parameter sets, when I first saw it, I was like, are these property sets or parameter sets? Uh, obviously, property sets, you know, lead into the idea of IFC. Um, you know, this could be the perfect chance for Autodesk to actually add, like, you know, an IFC semi-mapping process to the Revit models because you could give certain elements, certain property sets um, based on their classifications. And this would let you build a bridge between your Revit model and the IFC system. And maybe then this could lead on to exporting like a more valid IFC with properties that we can map between them. Like maybe that's a valid point to work with. Um, but at the moment as it stands, I can't see really any indication um, that the platform is moving towards IFC integration or at least effective IFC integration. At the moment I can see a couple of Kobe sets and like, you know, great, like five Kobe sets as always. Being Autodesk, they give you a few examples that don't build the system for you. Um, and then there's none owned by me. So at the moment, I've just, in this case, made a testing template. Um, uh, you can see that there's team management built in. So if you have multiple people in an organization or a team, um, great. Um, and, you know, you can do, a, I think, a very basic report um, on usage. So I'm probably not going to go there because it gets a bit slow. So that's pretty much like the, the management side of the platform. Like, there's definitely a lot of features I can see that are there that are going to be developed over time. Um, from here, you know, you've got your file stack or your model stack. So in this case, I've just got them all available. I think you can just turn them off globally here as well if you want to. Didn't seem to make a difference there, so maybe that's not exactly what that's meant to do. <laughs> um, and then your users as well. You can invite people in or services. So there's definitely like some um, some high level administration. I'm, I'm glad to see they kept um, they kept it very simple, which is great. This part has to be simple if a client's going to use it. Um, so this is obviously much easier, at least on the surface, it's much easier than the way BIM 360 administration works. So I think that's a good sign. Um, as well as that, there's also reporting and inventory takeoff. So in this case, the reports are pretty simple. I assume because it's free, I can only get so many reports. Um, to me, this looks like sort of high-level takeoff, high-level tallies and summaries for someone just to quickly open as a dashboard, um, which could be handy. At the, at the moment, I'm being told I have 15,000 elements, like, who cares? <laughs> That's not facilities management. Um, but in this case, I guess it looks like this is where you could build, like, a basic dashboard for the, you know, the super, super manager that doesn't have time to dive deep into the platform. We do have inventory as well. Um, this is probably, you know, one of the more interesting portions of the platform. Um, so in this case, you can just say follow selection, um, and just literally, I think in this case, it's going gonna, it's gonna to follow the selection as I change it. Now in this case, I do have to apply a filter first. Um, so let's just say I just want to look at my interior model, and I just want to look at ground floor. And as I go, notice it's um, sort of updating. And I'm just 
I'm gonna try again. I really, I really wish rooms <laughs> were in here. Really disappointed that rooms aren't there. I really don't understand why they're not. Let's just look at walls, and you can see now it's getting a little bit easier to see what's what's going on. Um, I'm still, you know, like a little bit jarred by the fact that everything is so Revit based. That's obviously, you know, a bit of a drawback. Um, uh, let's just look at basic walls, and maybe I just want to look at, say, you know, some petitions. But already I'm sort of working like I'm in Revit. I'm not really working like a facilities manager because facilities managers don't really work this way. <laughs> they they hunt down an asset based on a room and then they go to that room, find the asset, update its information. Now that's usually more commonly how they're gonna work. So you can see this process, uh, it doesn't really reflect how I typically would manage a facility, right? That's, that's the thing that I'm a little bit iffy about. Um, from here we have like all the columns in the world so we can add and remove columns. So I can say, you know, I don't care about a lot of these things, now we really need a dialogue for this, like just to, you know, really do it much faster. At the moment it's very slow. I'd like to do that over and over and over again. It's super tedious. Um, you know, if you have a lot of shared parameters, you're going to be in there for a while. Um, so, you know, not, not great. In this case, it looks like we can just say, show me type properties only, element properties only, um, and we can follow selections. So I can just pick between elements as I go. So sort of handy. Um, you can notice the UI, like, it always bugs out. I'm in Firefox at the moment, but as soon as I do that, it seems to fix. Um, now, I'm not quite sure what I'd do with this, to be honest. Like, if I was a facilities manager, um, you know, probably not really looking at walls, but let's say I'm fixing up some wall paint. Um, so if I want to go and update the paint, um, you know, what would I do? Well, in this case, I probably need to, first of all, have some parameter sets added to these elements to modify. At the moment, I don't. Uh, but what I can do here is just export, you know, a file. And this will give you like an Excel dump of pretty much what you can see. So at the moment, I don't have any parameter sets in here. So as far as I can tell, I can't actually make any edits to these elements unless they're native parameters to Tandem itself, which sort of makes sense because I guess it's reading the model. So if I made like a mark here, for example, and I just populated this in, and I saved it, and then I was gonna import it after. I don't believe it's gonna update any of that data. So if I just do that one. In this case, it didn't actually make a change to the data. So any data that belongs to Revit seems to be sort of held on by Revit, which is a bit of a problem to me because facilities managers need to access this data, right? Um, so it seems like a step in the right direction. Obviously just supporting Excel, again, Probably not the right step. I mean, you know, like CSV, SQL, there's so many types of ways that people store data these days. Um, so it does seem like a little bit narrow in vision at the moment. Um, but I think like it's it, it, it's the right idea. Um, it's just not necessarily, I think, like packaged in the way that a facility manager works. I do wonder how much engagement they had with actual facility managers to see how they work currently in developing such a platform. Um, again, like, you know, rooms, for example, it's such a glaring omission to me. Um, so I think like it, it's definitely like a platform with enough features and infrastructure there to develop upon. Um, but I guess like I was mainly just trying to show you like a very quick tour around how Tandem works. Um, I do recommend you try it out yourself. It's free currently. I haven't paid for what I'm doing here today. Um, so you can access, you can build your own facility. You can access the sample facility fairly quickly. Um, so do have a look, but I'll give sort of just my like two cents now, just as an outro. So there we go, um, Autodesk Tandem. Uh, th there are, you know, some good features here. Like obviously it's a very slick viewer. It's probably using the Forge viewer, something like that, that they've already developed. Um, but it is clean, easy to navigate. It's a little bit slow on loading in models. Um, th this model set probably took about maybe half an hour to get in total into there. And that was probably, you know, about maybe 120 megabytes total. Uh, so I know most projects are going over like 600 megabytes now. So that, that initial upload is gonna be a bit of a kick in the pants originally. Um, it does have BIM360 integration, which I couldn't test. So that might solve that problem a little bit. Um, but having said it, we're, we're gonna get into the same problems again of who owns the portals, who's the administrator, who owns the, you know, the dashboard for, for this. Again, it should be the client, right? But it just seems to never be the case. It's always the architect. So I, I feel like Tandem's challenge now is to really actually get in the hands of the clients. Um, this has always been the problem with most platforms like this. We can talk about them all day, say how great they are, but if our clients don't give two tosses, then it doesn't work. Um, I think Tandem's gonna have a, the same challenge. 
One, one really big disappointment um, I had in it is just that it's still very Revit centric. Um, clients don't use Revit, <laughs> they just don't. They use Excel, they use SQL if you're lucky. Um, they use databases for the most part, um, or they might use viewers. So I think it's a bit of a step in the wrong direction to make the program, you know, Revit centric, only support Revit. That, that's obviously a, a big disappointment. You know, no IFC again, <laughs> it, it's almost predictable, but but it's disappointing nonetheless that there is obviously a pretty heavy, heavy missing integration here. Um, that got parameter sets, didn't see P sets though. Um, so, so there's some steps in the wrong direction that make me think that as it stands right now, like Tandem's really gonna struggle to get main spread adoption. Um, sure, you're gonna get the audio disk evangelists going, how great is this? Best things to slice bread, digital win. Um, you know, it's, it's probably still at the point of digital spin, <laughs> I would say. Um, I think the platform itself has potential, like the framework is all there. It, it, it all makes sense. There's a classification system, there's the ability to add more property sets. Um, so I see, I see the, the, the potential, it's there. I think it could work, um, but they definitely need to think harder about how, how it integrates with the bigger picture. Um, it can't just be you know, a glorified Revit viewer, right? I mean, it's just not gonna work if that's, if that's what it becomes. It's just going to be like the BIM 360 design model viewer. Um, you know, the architects and the engineers will spin around it. Good luck getting the contractor in there and you'll, you'll probably never get the client in there. So it's, it's, it's one of those things. So I guess in terms of um, some, some technical challenges I see in the platform as well, um, obviously only supporting RVT. You know, I've, I've sort of already said it's disappointing that IFC is not there, but, but I do wonder how it's going to integrate with things like GIS data sets, if at all, um, how it's going to geolocate given that there's no coordinates correction tools, at least from what I could see. Um, as well as that, um, just the fact that everything is very Revit terminology based. That makes me feel they're not going to expand uh, the way the program works to represent other, you know, non Autodesk formats like IFC and Tecla, things that actually are, you know, required <laughs> in a digital twin platform, I'll be honest. Um, so I think that's really going to hold it back until they can solve that, um, as well as that being very he heavily focused around American classification. Um, so master format and uni format does show sort of the limit of Autodesk's vision um, in that regard. I think the fact that they did not support uni class is, is just a, a jarring omission. It's becoming very commonly used, especially in the UK and Digital Twins first push will be in the UK, not the States. So it, it's a bit of an obvious omission. Um, probably the biggest one I noticed, uh, my entire model is set up with UniClass 2015. Um, and, and you know, obviously I can't really take advantage of many of the features in there because there's no schema preloaded in there, unfortunately. Um, so I, I do wonder if, you know, if they can't get those things under wraps, um, maybe the platform's just gonna become you know, another tool that sort of kicked off and never really kicked kicked further. Um, so hopefully it's, you know, uh, I, I guess gonna keep getting kicked down the field rather than dribbled um, per se. But but I mean, at the same time, you know, I, I do see that the platform is clean. It's, it's, it's easy to use, it's easy to navigate for the most part. Having said that, I, I use Revit, so, you know, it probably makes sense to me. But if I looked at it through the vision of a client, I think there's probably a little bit too much Revit terminology in there um, so at the same time I could see them getting quite lost or confused quite quickly um, so maybe some streamlining some hand holding is probably necessary uh, for the platform to work I assume that if you're not on the free version it's still sort of the same interface I doubt that they hide too much in the interface so um, one more detail I think is probably important to add which I didn't actually mention um, and I'm just editing it onto the end of this video is the cost um, in this case uh, there's a few different options obviously I'm just looking at the free version which has some limited features that you can use to try it out. Um, the next tier above that, I believe is 3000 US dollars, I think it was, um, last I was checking, which gives you access to 5,000 assets. Now in this case, assets I assume are the number of elements you're tracking inside your building. Um, so this might suit like some medium to larger scale jobs, or it might be 5,000 buildings. It's a little unclear to me exactly what that represents. Um, but in this case, I guess, it would probably work for like most medium scale companies. But once you're going beyond that, um, the next tier is pretty incredible. Um, <laughs> brace yourself. It's 510,000 US dollars a year. Holy <laughs> uh, We're talking some serious bucks there. So uh, I don't know exactly who's jumping in at that cost right now, um, if anyone, but it'll be interesting to see if they get any major stakeholders like that. Um, because obviously dumping half a million dollars into a product every year is a pretty significant investment. Um, so obviously that's gonna price 
a lot of people out of using it, I'd say, at scale. Um, a lot of people are gonna look to probably just hire their own developers. Like you can hire two to three in-house developers to customize your own solution um, for that sort of cost. Um, it, it might be, you know, not necessarily feasible to do that in all cases, but um, it has to be said. So anyway, I just thought I'd add that. Um, but yeah, that's all. So that's um, that's sort of my thoughts. Um, so I guess like it, there's a lot of criticism in there, um, but that is because I want to see this, you know, be a viable platform and maybe a bit of an olive branch from Autodesk to the industry. Uh, at the moment, it looks a little bit more like another closed off part of their ecosystem. Um, but I think Autodesk is really getting to the point where they need to start engaging the industry um, a little bit more openly than here's another program that integrates with Webit um, because, you know, they're just closing themselves off. I mean, you can't put yourself under siege forever, right? <laughs> so, so that's my thoughts. Um, I'm keen to hear what sort of you think of the platform, where you think it might go, and you know whether you think I'm full of it. Um, but I guess in this case, I just wanted to give my two cents. Um, definitely check it out yourself. Like, it's one of those things where I, I can only pick up on so many features in the time that I sort of spend reviewing these platforms. There's probably things I've missed. Um, I haven't looked at it, obviously, through the eyes of a services coordinator or a, a building manager or a facilities manager. There's a lot of different ways you could look at this platform, and in that, you might see different things. Anyway, um, hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so, and I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.